is the Creative Church Show. Tips, tricks, and shortcuts making church media easy for you and your team. All in under 10 minutes each week. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the Creative Church Show. My name is Josh from joshblankenship.me. I'm excited to be back with you for episode number 40. I don't love the number 40, but I feel like it's creeping up on me. For those of you over 40, I mean no disrespect, but I really just don't want to be 40. Anyways, sorry, that was a little rabbit trail there, but... um, Let's go ahead and jump into this week's topic. Today I want to talk about how you can kill a brainstorming meeting. I love brainstorming. That's part of the reason that I chose to take the job that I have now. Part of my job as a creative pastor is to lead brainstorming meetings and to help create sermon series, uh, worship sets, and a plethora of other awesome things. I've learned the hard way, though, over the past couple years that ruining or killing a brainstorming meeting is very, very easy to do. It doesn't really take very much to turn a creative meeting into a boring, non-productive meeting. So if you are one of those people who lead or participate in creative meetings for your church or for your business... It's important that you find a certain flow and a certain rhythm. There are a few things, however, that I think can truly kill a creative meeting. They can destroy anything good that you have. So if you are doing any of these things in your creative meetings, you are probably not getting the most out of them that you could be. So I want to go ahead and talk about a few of those things that if you are doing you're probably killing your church's creativity and killing your brainstorming meetings. And the first one is to have too many rules. Now, if you've ever walked into a brainstorming meeting and said something like, all right, guys, uh, we got to get out of here with three good ideas. They really can't be too expensive and they've got to be realistic. Your creative meetings are probably going to fail every time. If you are putting those kind of restraints and rules on the creative process, on that creative spirit, then you are going to struggle to get truly good, actionable, creative ideas. The key is to let the ideas flow without very many restrictions, and then what you can do is you can come back to reality later. But if you're putting too many rules, too many restrictions on people, you're going to have a hard time coming up with truly creative and good ideas. The second one sounds a little weird when you first hear it, but it's too much writing. Now, I do believe it's important to write down good ideas, but you can't sacrifice speed and flow. So if you are in the middle of a conversation about a brand new sermon series idea and things are flowing, things are going good, but every time somebody has an idea, you have to stop and write down every single word verbatim. If you are doing that, you are going to slow down the process and you're going to kill the flow. So have multiple people take smaller notes and then you can put it together in the end. This is the best way to keep that flow, to keep the excitement level, to keep the creativity flowing, is to make sure that you're not stopping at every point when somebody throws out an idea to write down a whole paragraph about that idea. Take some bullet point notes, have several people doing it so that at the end you can take the notes and you can combine them all together, bring them all together to form your entire creative idea. Number three is not having adequate time before. So brainstorming is never going to work without a little bit of preparation. So if you're the one leading a session, you've got to let people know in advance what they should be thinking about to get those ideas going. So if you are a participant, you actually need to prepare and have a few ideas 
when you come into the meeting. So if you are leading or you are participating, you've got to take the time before the meeting starts to start thinking and getting the conversation started before the clock starts ticking. That's how creative meetings can turn into five hour long meetings of basically nothingness is because nobody was prepared. Nobody knew what they were going to be talking about. Nobody knew what they should be thinking about. Nobody knew the topics or the ideas that were going to be talked about. The fourth thing is letting the machines take over. Now in our world, this is a tough one. If your entire team has, you know, iPads, MacBooks, and phones on during the meeting, the overall focus and the overall creativity is going to suffer. There is a little bit of a time to let people research ideas online, but in reality, that's what you should be doing before you come to the meeting. But you can't just let people sit there and type on their MacBooks or or type on their phone, even if they're doing something that's related to the topic, even if they're doing something that's related to the meeting, you cannot just let them take control and take over the meeting. It's a good idea, and I've done this before because sometimes it can get out of control, myself included. It's a good idea to have a portion of the meeting be totally technology-free. So everybody turns everything off, they, th they throw it away, and just let our brain sink in and discuss with each other the creative ideas instead of always looking online to see if somebody else has done that or if there's anything similar out there. Just make part of your meeting machine free. The next one is letting the pastor take the lead all the time. So if you're a lead pastor or you're the boss of your organization, it's easy to dominate the conversation and the ideas. And if you are leading the meeting with employees or even volunteers, a lot of times it's hard to build a team if you're the most dominant voice. So if you've got people in there because they're creative, because they have innovative ideas, as the leader, you need to let them do their job and create an environment in which everybody is equal during the meeting. Because a lot of times, Creative people can get intimidated by strong leaders. They can lose their focus, lose their creativity. And if you're the leader of the organization and you are constantly just um, dominating the meeting and taking over, and you might not even be realize, realizing that you're doing it, but you will be killing the creative juices. So don't, don't lead the meeting and don't come swooping in every time there's an idea. Um, to tell people either that's not good or you've got a better idea. If you're doing that, the team is going to suffer. The next thing is too much judgment. And the first and most important thing, in my opinion, when we're talking about brainstorming or creative meetings, is to not judge. Um, allow any idea, basically, to be taken seriously. And to some of you who are grounded in reality, that might seem ridiculous, but it's really the only way to get ideas flowing. So if you want to encourage that creative thinking, if you want to encourage um, ideas that no one's ever thought of, you cannot be judging every single idea that comes up. I've, I've seen before, I've seen um, some creative teams people use uh, water guns in a meeting. So every time somebody is critical of, an, of another person's idea, the entire group shoots them with the water guns. And I think that's a really cool idea to keep the judgment out of it. And the bottom line on this one is during the idea phase, during your initial brainstormings, you do not want to judge or cross off any of the ideas that are being thrown around. The last thing that I want to talk about is no follow-up. Now, this is a big one because if you maybe just had the greatest brainstorming meeting of your creative team's life, maybe you thought of the greatest sermon series, you thought of the greatest event that's going to cause your church to explode and there's going to be thousands and thousands of visitors, even if you've had a great meeting like that, when you leave the brainstorming meeting and you have good ideas, you're also going to have a bunch of crappy ideas. So hopefully 
you will have one or two good ones that come out of that particular meeting. But if you're not following up and you're not handing out responsibilities at your brainstorming meeting or right after, those ideas, those great things that you thought of are almost worthless. So if you have a brainstorming meeting, you have got to follow up with people, especially if it's an action-oriented item. So you've got to learn that follow-up is one of the most important parts of a brainstorming meeting. So if you want to do it right, you've got to follow up with people during or right after the brainstorming meeting. Don't let it sit and simmer for weeks and weeks before you follow up. Make sure that you follow up as soon as possible so that you can start implementing those brainstorming ideas. Hopefully, guys, this has helped a little bit. If you are a brainstormer, if you're leading or participating, I'd love to hear some of your stories or maybe your frustrations or things that have worked for your organization with brainstorming. Head over to joshblankenship.me. I'd love to see your comments. Hit me up on social media anytime. I'd love to chat with you. Thank you again for listening and watching the Creative Church Show podcast. My name is Josh, and I can't wait to see you next week.